Hmm, this background is rather blank. I should probably put something on it. Oh, duh! I'm gonna turn down the brightness a bit because it can get pretty overwhelming. Anyway, hello there. Welcome to the good version of my Q&A. If you had forgotten, I had made a video where you could ask me questions back in November of 2023, and I decided that it's finally time to answer these questions. Thank you to all who submitted their questions, and if you didn't make it, that's alright. I'm actually probably not going to be making another one of these, but you're always welcome to ask me stuff, even in this video. Also, even though I'm using my persona right now, it's actually not going to appear much in this video save for a few questions. This is because with the question and the background footage, there will be too much going on in the screen. Plus it saves me time when it comes to the editing. By the way, the names in the screenshots might be different from what I say in the script. That's because YouTube added handles, which is like, why? And the names I say are instead their actual channel name. So I'd like to put it up there in case you get confused. Now then, without further ado, let's get started. The first question comes from a box who asks, Lisa the tutorial maybe? I don't quite know what you're asking for here, I'm assuming you want a tutorial in making Lisa games. That's honestly a topic that requires an entire video to be discussed, and in fact it already has been, but I'll give you a short list of what to do. Number 1, get RPG Maker VX Ace, not XP, not MV, VX Ace. It's on Steam, and it's expensive as hell, so you probably want to wait until there's a sale. If you don't have money or don't want to spend any, you can always pirate it. I'm not gonna give you instructions for that though. Number 2, get the decryptor. This is one I also won't give you the instructions for, but if you ask around in the community, especially the Discord servers of fan games, people always have one in stock. Follow the instructions there and you're good to go. Number 3, just try to figure out how things work. Say that you wonder how dialogue changes depending on whether you've taken joy or not, and you want to know how that happens. Sooner or later, you will realize the power of conditional branch. But there's really just a whole lot of things for you to know about, and it's better to experience it firsthand. And that's the gist of it. If you want to make good games, then that's a whole different kind of worms. Just remember, don't be discouraged when your first work is bad. Everyone has to start somewhere, even Talon himself, who is now working on Lisa the Hopeless. But yeah, quite a lengthy answer for only the first question, so let's move on. Next we have one from a very dear friend of mine, Vulture Salesman, who demands I play Battle Cats. Okay then. Um. Anyway, as for the question, do you think you'll keep up this whole YouTuber gig, or will you eventually quit altogether once you do everything you want to do, whenever that is? Huh, quite a thinker on this one. I do have a list of videos I want to make, but it's not really a set in stone thing. It always changes depending on what I can or can't do at the moment. So even if I manage to clear off the list, it can always grow back. Meaning that this won't decide whether I quit or not. Although I do see myself becoming busier and busier in the future, to the point where doing YouTube is just not worth spending my time on. Hell, just look at my brother. I know he's still making music because I see him do it from time to time, but he hasn't uploaded to YouTube in years. For now, however, I will continue to do this. After all, YTPMVs are my thing, and what do the first two letters in YTPMV stand for? That's right, YouTube. So in summary, I probably will quit someday, just not anytime soon. Next we have Internet Freak, who asks, Is there any particular media slash games you would recommend to the average Alter Reaper enjoyer? You already know the answer to this one, didn't you? Well, unsurprisingly, Toho Project to It has girls, with like one or two dudes that only appear in the mangas, so it's pretty much just gender bad Lisa. Just, you know, with more magic and fantasy and being a whole different genre. Even if you're not interested in the characters or the gameplay, which you can see right here, there's always one thing you can count on. The music. Other than that, there's not much of other medias I'm into lately, let alone games. So I'm just gonna list off a couple things that I like even though I haven't been indulging them in recent times. 
Shovel Knight. That's where I got my username from, which in case you don't know, comes from Spectre Knight, who is a Reaper. And I made this account after my main account, which makes it an alt, and so I got Ultra Reaper. Persona. These are games that you quite literally have to dedicate weeks of your life to finish, let alone do a full completion. I have Persona 4 Golden since 2021 on my Steam library, and I have not touched it. It's just been collecting digital dust and I really do want to start playing it. And maybe that will be this year, because Persona 3 Reload has been released. So that definitely has made me excited to play the Persona series again. After that, there's Valve games in general. I mean, come on, this is the same company that made Steam. RPG Maker games that are RPG, mostly horror ones such as Aoni, Misao, The Witch's House, Black Dream, and especially Eve. As for medias aside from games, the biggest ones would probably be How Met Your Mother, Community, The IT Crowd, Kill Me Baby, and Yuyushiki. And that's it, let's move on. Next up, we have JR Someone, who says no one ever cares about a YouTuber talking about his persona for 45 seconds no matter how popular they are. Cut to the church, dumbass. Can you dance, and if not, what dance move would you learn instantly if you could? I don't know what made you think I could dance, so the answer to the first question is a resounding no. As for the second question, I don't fucking know. The greedy, I guess? I'm not interested in dancing and I never will be, so my answer won't matter either way. Next, we have Maruni Baluni, who asks, Are you gonna play other games besides Lisa on this channel? And if so, will it be other RPGs like this, or different genres? This channel is exclusively Lisa content, with the exception of that one time I had a streak of play rough videos and commentary videos like this one. But ultimately, I only want to upload Lisa related stuff in here. In fact, that's why all the YTP MVs I've made have either used music from Lisa or taken samples from Lisa, though mostly stock RPG Maker, sound effects. I got a couple of ideas for ones that don't include Lisa at all, and if I ever get around to working on those, it'll be uploaded to my main channel instead. If I were to hypothetically upload other videos, I think I'll still do RPG games. Maybe with some exception like TF2 or Shovel Knight or, well, you can see the one right here. But ultimately, you'll only be seeing Lisa related stuff. Next, we have Destiny Gaming, who asks, What was your reaction to Sentinel leaving YouTube? Really, really bum. Sentinel was one of the few Lisa YouTubers I actively watched, and even when he didn't upload Lisa videos, I still watched it. Sometimes when I have nothing else to watch, I just revisit his old playthroughs. It was also just a nice change of scenery among all the faceless, voiceless, small mode showcasing YouTubers, as he has shown both his face and voice. And I used to be bummed that he never got around to playing smaller mods, but nowadays I'm honestly thankful because, good lord, that's a rabbit hole I didn't want him to fall into. But yeah, Sentinel always brightened my day whenever he uploaded. It's sad to see him go, but I'm glad he's finally content with himself. Next up, we have Albanian Estonian Man, who asks, Will you speedrun different routes in Hopeful? Do you want me to keep beating you? Just aside, I'll probably try to do the Rodriguez route someday, but I probably won't do the others like Joid and Old Virgin unless I'm bored out of my mind. Well, that's all I have to say really. This is a pretty simple question, and I give a simple answer in return. Although I would like to mention one thing, Pointless and Score of the Wilbur Sin are actually now on speedrun.com, and as you might recall, I've actually done a speedrun of Score of the Wilbur Sin before. However, I'm not actually submitting this as my attempt because, well, this was 3 years in advance, I feel like I'd be cheating in that case. So because of that, it probably won't even be valid. But in case you're interested, feel free to attempt to speedrun the game yourself. Anyway, let's move on. Next we have Max Fug, who asks, why bother? Because with how bad the 2021 version went, I felt unsatisfied that the simple concept of getting questions and answering them didn't go the way I wanted it to. It's like an itch I couldn't scratch, and now it's scratch. And that's it really. But hey, you said you were going to get unceremoniously skipped, and yet here you are. I say no man gets left behind. Although, uh, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity and you kinda blew it. Next we have the first of multiple questions from Tire Iron, so this one's gonna take a while. The first one is, what accent do you have? Well, I'm from Indonesia, so Indonesian, I guess. Second, what's your favorite thing added to Painful or Joyful in Definitive Edition? Binky Buzzo. You'd think this is when I say jokes aside, but everything else that was added are either just okay or straight up bad. I mean, I guess Binky Buzzo is also bad, but you know, it's so bad that it's good. Third, favorite song or song artist. Again, I'm going to refer to you to
His name is Zun, in case you didn't know. Though in 2023, I also found out about Ko... I can't say their name. They're the ones that made Lamprey Hole and the other Fish Market series of music. Does that count as promoting? I don't want to disappoint at all. If I had to choose my favorite songs from these people, it'd probably be Lunatic Princess and the aforementioned Lamprey Hole. As for Lisa, it's gonna be Arrow to the Head for me. Fourth, what's a good way into learning how to make proper Lisa game balancing? Have other people play as your game. You, as the creator, know the ins and outs of your game, meaning you'll know exactly what works and what doesn't. And if the thing that works is the only way for you to beat the game, then you'll know that there's some problems there. Other than that, I don't have much else to say. I guess keep things in a smaller scale similar to pointless and timeless. Big numbers tend to be a bit more complicated to balance as it's easy to make things deal too much damage or too little damage. Whereas smaller numbers means you can find the middle ground a lot easier. Fifth, thoughts on ungrateful. It's a uh, it's thing alright. What is there to say that hasn't been said by other people? Uh, old woman, body returns, allegedly a self-insert, metal gear, wacky combat, it's, uh... Wow, I seriously don't have the brain power to articulate my thoughts about this game. Let's, uh, let's move on. Next we have Snackdrack, who asks, Do you like Psychonauts? I haven't played it, but that's the one with the easter egg of a lady burning down an orphanage and being haunted by the ghosts of the children or something, right? That shit used to creep me the hell out. And that's pretty much all I know about this game. Next we have Puppet Raid, who asks, On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you regret giving me that Yado sprite? I think what you should've asked is how much I regret making that Yado sprite, as giving it to you was just something to get over and done with, making it an easy one. Making the sprite is also an easy one because I have no regrets. And also, what is your reaction to the announcement that Dripful is getting a definitive edition update? Well, it's good that Drip Heart will be immortalized some way because, uh, here's a little secret. I plan on replacing Drip Heart with something else in Heart's perspective. I just don't want a joke that lasts for a week to end up lasting for years. Plus, he's not even my creation, so I don't feel content with keeping him around. The main dev that worked on the Drip Heart update seemed okay with me replacing him someday, so I'm not worried on that side. But yes, you'll have to say goodbye to Drip Heart eventually. Not now, but someday. Next we have Moshael, who has Moss Creepy and Lisa when? Right now. See? Right there. Uh, kind of unfortunate that you take Lisa's place, but hey, at least you're there now. Also, by the time I wrote this part of the script, I had written, Also, I found your comment in Killer Necropolis, and color me surprised as you know where in Lisa Baby. I guess you're not as much of a Kill Me Baby fan as I am, huh? But, uh, as I've posted before, the creator of Killer Necropolis, Coron 3, got copyrighted to death. So that video, and by extension that comment, no longer exists. How unfortunate. Next we have Reded ITA, who asks, Thoughts on the new Half-Life update? Again, I would like to remind you that I posted the questions video in November of 2023, and this was my answer. Genuinely surprised that Valve did anything. Even though 25 years is a long time, it's not like it was impossible for them to ignore it. I haven't played it again or watched the documentary myself, but I enjoy the existence of it overall. Now here's hoping they do something with TF2 in 9 years. Next we have Mr. McNuggets himself, Nero Steinsberg, who has opinion on bread, very filling, very tasty, and very versatile. By the time I wrote this part of the script, I had bread pudding, and it's one hell of a dessert. Uh, I don't know what else to add. Let's get this bread, gamers. I don't fucking know. Let's move on. Next, we have a schizophrenic batter who asks, What fan game slash creation that you made are you most proud of? This one's a no-brainer, it's Heart Squad Revamp. It was quite literally a turning point in my life because of how shitty the majority of 2022 was. But then I joined the contest in October of that year, and everything just fell into place. I will say that the one that took the most quote-unquote effort, in the sense that I had to spend a lot of time and energy working on it alone, is probably Heart's perspective. But the fact that in Heart Squad Revamp I work with other people like these, Vulture Salesmen, and even my own brother Pixel Cherries, it made the experience less lonely, and therefore more fun. Heart Squad Revamp is honestly something that's really special to me specifically. Even if it's not the most unique or popular mod out there, I think my life would be pretty different had I, and everyone else I work with, not brought it to fruition. As a bonus, I'll also rank the mods I made in order from proudest to least proud. Though I would like to clarify that I'm talking about the ones I uploaded on Game Jolt, so Bellboy Faces a Shadow doesn't count. Number 1, of course, is Heart Squad Revamp. Number 2 is Heart's Perspective. Number 3 might be surprising to some, but it's Cindy Gauss Overhaul. Number 4 is Heart vs. Arnold, the very first one. And dead last at number 5 is Arnold vs. Heart. I should probably think of names to differentiate those two games. But it's not like people still care about those anyway. Let's move on. Next we have Solds, who asks, How's life going for ya? Decent? Half decent? It's so bad you might as well call it a Lisa reference? Good? Just curious. Again, I wrote this part in November of 2023. I'll say what my answer was at that time and then add on my new thoughts afterwards. Here it is. It seriously can't get better than this. 
for once I can go through an entire day and go to sleep without having to worry about what I have to do tomorrow, or looking back so far into the past to the point of being unable to live in the moment. My life has been good. I needed 2023 to happen. Although one thing could be made better. If all the bad bugs in the world could die a painful death. Seriously, I have lost countless sleeps to these fucks. The psychological torture they inflict, not to mention the itchiness of their bite, is just too much for one man to handle. But other than that, it has been quite great. As for 2024, this year didn't kick off as well as 2023 did. It's no surprise that my channel has had a significant downfall from the past years, and I've had a bit of time to accept this fact. Seeing other YouTubers wanting to quit YouTube has given me the idea that I may do the same thing, but as I've posted before, I want to at least get through this year before doing so. As for things outside of this channel, it's been fine. Nothing too special like last year where I first got deep into Toho Project 2. It could be better, but it could also be worse. I don't want to complain too much. Next, we have Mr. Fractured Bones himself, Funtarmore, who asks, what got you into making YTP MVs? Is there some big deep backstory to it? Or were you just one day like, this is cool, I should try making one? You have no idea what you just asked, did you? There is indeed a backstory. It is pretty deep, so buckle up. I'd say it was around 2013 through 2015 where I first got into YTP MVs. I'm sure I've seen a couple before then, but I never went out of my way to look for them. Most of them were of popular video game music like Nintendo, Sega, Capcom, what have you. By the end of 2015 though, Undertale was released and music from that got turned into YTP MVs too. The most popular source at the time, I think, was Jontron and uh... Is, is he still racist? It's really unfortunate to see someone I enjoyed back then to turn out to not be so good. But yeah, those were the beginning days. Come 2018 and my interest in YTP MVs had resurfaced, and during this time is when the big guns have been brought out, because this is when I started to look for Toho YTP MVs, or Auto MEDs if you will. I've seen some during the early days, but I never looked for it on my own, just stumbling upon them from time to time. Anyway, 2018. This was the time I found a lot of Night of Nights, Chiro Miru, and I think a couple of UNO1 was her and Bad Apple, but I don't recall there being much. And I pretty much just played this YTP MVs on loop throughout the year, although my interest on it would fade out by the end of it. And so I never really got back into YTP MVs until 2022. One day YouTube just recommended me Bonko Miro again, and just like that, I got hooked again. This time I also found out about Marissa Stole the Precious Thing and definitely Bad Apple, not to mention Dirge himself making some of his own. And uh, as I've mentioned, 2022 wasn't a very good year, and so I got quite attached to the happiness that were brought by these YTP MVs, to the point where I'd play it on loop during the worst days just to feel, well, something. To be reminded of the simpler times where I don't have to worry about my life every waking moment. And I think this attachment actually served me well, as my interest in YTP MVs stayed even up to the beginning of 2023 which is the moment you've all been waiting for, as this is where I started making my own. And just so I won't have to repeat what I've said in the channel summary, I got very deep into YTP MVs and found a tutorial for the visuals. With that, and my brother's help in the audio, I was sure I can make my own. And well, the rest is history. Ross Crodom's origin story, Backwater Crowd, Temporary Tough Should We Be Wary, Lisa Baby, Karim Scolds, Burn Dreams, Joy Factory, and of course, Ross Crodom's full origin story. The end. See, this is what I wanted to come from this Q&A. So I can share with you guys about stuff that you probably just took a glance at. You've probably watched some of my YTP MVs before, but now you also know the history of my interest with it. Oh, wait, there's still more. Also, will you ever do a YTP MV that isn't related to Lisa in some way? Yes, absolutely. In fact, when I first wanted to make YTP MVs early in 2023, I wanted to use sources outside of Lisa. However, I was aware that I needed to start small. And the fact that this channel is significantly more popular than my main account. I might start working on one not long after this video is uploaded, who knows. Whew, that one was a doozy, ain't it? Let's move on. Next we have All Lag, who asks, Burger King or McDonald's? People are dying out there and this is what you ask of me. I got a local burger joint that beats both of them. And if I'm not in the mood to buy stuff, I can just fry up some frozen meat and make a sandwich out of that. Which adds to the versatility of bread that I mentioned in Nero's question earlier. Next we have Jacob Edwards, who asks, do you like Staying Alive by the Bee Gees? And did you know that the song has the correct amount of BPM to help you correctly perform CPR? Huh, really? I didn't know that. Thanks, Dr. Mike. I haven't listened to it myself, but I'm sure it's good. Next, we have some rando who asks, Does the eternally full mug of chocolate milk have an expired date? If so, how do you deal with said eternally full mug of expired milk? Of course not. With a power as ridiculous as an eternally full mug of chocolate milk, you kinda have to make sure that it never expires. Otherwise, you're stuck with a mug of expired milk glued to your hand. Nobody wants that. Next, we have Cool Goose 229 who asks, Are you cool? Of course I am. Yes, he's on after all. Next, we have Lego Captain Jack Sparrow who asks, What is your favorite Pirates of the Caribbean movie? 
I have not watched any of those movies in ages, but the one I remember most is the one where like, there's two wines or something, and when you drink the wrong one, there's suddenly a whirlpool that turns you into a skeleton. That one's not necessarily my favorite because, again, I haven't watched them in ages, but that's the one I remember the most vividly. What are those weird bronze things on your PNG faces? It's like a visor or a mask that night helmets have. I based it mostly on Spectre Knight's face, so that's why it looks like this. Also, I don't know what world you live in where yellow is bronze, although I suppose I shaded it a bit too heavily. And, if you were dropped in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, how long do you think you would last? Not very long. I never like camping trips where you go out to the wilderness, and even then, those still have other people. But alone, I'd probably just lie down and give myself up to whatever animal comes across me. I already have a pretty good life anyway, this wouldn't be the worst ending. Next we have GarfieldFan2009, who asks, Is ExoZombies a good game? This is the first time I've heard of it, which of course means I haven't played it. Which obviously means I don't know whether it's good or not. It's got a cool name though. Next we have Softtech Customer, who asks, Opinion on other RPG Maker games besides Lisa? Actually, I actually haven't played that many RPG Maker games. I've seen stuff like Omori, Hylix, Humaniki, OneShot, etc etc, and I think they're all fine. I also mentioned RPG Maker horror games earlier, and emphasized my recommendation on Eve because that one is my personal favorite. It is easily one of my top 5 games, believe it or not. Of course, there are also other ones like Playroff or Five Nights at Fuckboys. The former I enjoy quite well, the latter, um, I guess it takes me back, to say the least. Next we have another dear friend, DB Malkite, who asks, when are we gonna get the Master Bates mod? 50 years, even then that's not guaranteed. Jokes aside, I don't think it's a possibility anytime soon. I haven't really thought about a game involving Master Bates, that's his guy if you didn't know already. Aside from small ideas that I think are cool and then immediately forget about. Maybe one day when I decide to conceptualize the story, characters, gameplay, what have you. Only then will it become a real possibility. For now, however, Master Bates will only stay as a bunch of PNGs that I save in one folder. Next we have one from my very own little brother, Disco Bomber, who asks, Do you have an epic cool awesome little brother? Nope. Next we have, uh, I'm just kidding. Of course I do. We've had our shortcomings, but hey, that's a given with any siblings, right? Next we had a question from Rigoberto Criticas420. However, as I've posted before, I had blocked him from this channel, which also deleted every comment he ever made. I can't take a screenshot of the question itself, but it was still in the script. And that question was, Will you work on Tomful? Nope. Next we have not an alien who asks, What advice do you have to people who are getting into RPG Maker? Always try to do new things. Let's say, for example, you make a party member that can inflict a variety of status effects, like wary, stun, and piss. Then you make a new project, and you do the exact same thing. Not only will this be tedious for you, it will be tedious for the people playing your game. Just try to mix things up every once in a while, and then just stick with what works just because it's the easier option. You can look at other people's projects to try and get a better idea of what's possible. For example, Jesus, Joyous, and Mod pretty much overhauled the entire hopeful combat system. It still feels the same, yet it's very different. If you are to dig through every aspect of that mod, maybe you'll realize just how much potential your games can have. Getting help from other people is always a good thing too. These are people that had to learn things the hard way, so if they tell you outright on what you need to do, you're able to gain knowledge on something that may have taken longer for most people. In summary, do new things, get help from other people. Let's move on. Next we have Swagmaster, who asks, Do you have a favorite half game? I mentioned TF2 earlier, didn't I? That's my answer. Maybe a bit basic, but it's the one I always come back to. I remember first playing it back in 2016, which was coincidentally the worst time for TF2, considering that's when Meteor Match and Overwatch happened. But I had a ton of fun either way. And then I don't recall playing it much in 2017, besides trying out the Jungle Inferno stuff when it was still new. Then I remember coming back to it in 2018, and then I didn't play it again in 2019. I vaguely remember playing a bit on 2020 and 2021, but this was during the time where the bots were at their worst, so I didn't play for long. And then I got back into it in 2022, and I'm still playing it to this day. So yeah, TF2 has been with me for almost 8 years now. Oh my god, how has it been that long? Uh, let's just move on. Next we have Jacket Bottom Text, who asks, Your current view on Lisa fan content? There is a lot. Frankly, a bit too much. It's really, really oversaturated, and I think that's a big reason as to why I find it really hard to make my own mods without something like a contest to push me to do it. Because like, what can I offer that hasn't already been done? Ultimately, the content that stands out the most are original ones, full-fledged fan games with an original story and original characters, but those come so few and far between nowadays. At the same time, I don't condemn mods that are lower in quality to say the least. As I've mentioned before, everyone has to start somewhere, even big wigs like Kalan, so I'm not super cynical to the point of thrashing every single mod that gets released. At the same time, you should recognize that there should be a level of quality to your mods, so always put effort into your creations, even if it's something as basic as making your own sprites and scale animations. In summary, it's oversaturated, but I don't condemn anyone that's just starting out. Next we have Double T, who asks, Best color of the Wilbur mod? Only one option is right. Ah, 
that is true. It's Drunkard's Paradise, obviously. Next we have Mighty Morphin 2, who asks, Are you- Huh? Next we have Alonso Estai Silva, who asks, Can you do a fucking flip? I don't know. Let's see. Again, just a stock sound effect. The answer's no. Next we have Silver Fairs, who asked to get a Discord link to the revamp contest. I already answered it in the replies, but I kept my word of featuring you in the video. Let's move on. Oh, uh, well, hello there. If you're wondering as to why I sound like this now, it's because my usual microphone broke. It just doesn't work whenever I plug it in. So I'm making do with the headset for now. Anyway, as you can see, my background footage is finished, which was something unexpected. I was initially going to put the extra stage of USD here, but I still haven't beat it. So here's Mountain of Faith instead. This footage is 22 minutes long, and I really do not want to waste it by cutting it short as we only have a couple of questions left. So right after we're done with that and I do my outro, I'll actually leave the rest of the raw gameplay footage for those of you interested in watching. Speaking of my outro, it will also sound like this during that, as even though I already recorded it with my mic before, there are more things I want to say now. So rather than having an inconsistent audio quality, I'll just re-record the entire thing. With all of that being said, here's the rest of the questions. Next we have Marak Rof Itkak, I hope I got that right. It looks like Cacti for Karam when reversed. Anyway, they ask, who's your favorite video game protagonist and why? I'm gonna sound like a broken record here and mention Spectre Knight from Shovel Knight. I have a personal attachment to the Spectre of Torment DLC to the point of naming my username after him. As I mentioned earlier, he may seem like an edgy character on the surface, but he's genuinely cool and tragic, which adds to my affinity for him. Even though I haven't played or even indulged in any type of content related to Shovel Knight recently, Spectre of Torment is still my favorite video game of all time, and I think Spectre Knight is the reason for it. Next we have Angry Coffee Kid, who asks multiple questions. The first one is, you drew your profile picture, so are you gonna make more public art, and if so, where could we find it? I would post more art publicly if I make more art in general. And when I say that, I mean drawings that I feel are complete rather than me doodling out of boredom, which I've done very frequently these past two years. As you can see from a couple of my community posts, I've made the hopeful cast being fused with the imperishable knight and embodiment of the scarlet devil cast, and my own original lovelies. They all have shading and, well, some form of background, whereas other drawings I've made and shared with other people in, say, Discord servers, I tend not to post publicly. Speaking of which, I'll probably only share them in my community posts and game jolt, since those are where I'm most known and active. Sometimes I post on my Twitter, but that's mostly just a formality. If you happen to be in the same Discord server as I am, well, you'll most likely see my stuff there as well. The second one is, also, now that you have an avatar, are you gonna become a reactionary commentary channel, LMAO? No, because the fact that I'm holding a mug makes it impossible for me to cross my arms, meaning I can never truly be a commentary channel. Jokes aside, the answer is still no. I mostly made my persona for fun, and if I happen to have a commentary video in mind, I would end up using him, just like in this video. Next we have Schwinkle, who asks two questions. The first one is, have you ever thought of making slash working on Lisa fan games? Yes. If you mean working as in being part of a team of someone else's fan game, then I'm actually doing that right now, for multiple fan games actually. What's my role in those? No idea. I don't know what direction to go in. If any of the devs of a game that I'm a part of is watching this right now, please tell me what to do. I don't have your vision, so it's just not in my nature to work on something that I don't have a clear idea on. As for making my own, that I also have thought of. In fact, I had an idea way back when I was 14, which I scrapped not long after because it was made when I was 14. I have some ideas regarding an actual fan game that I might want to become real someday, as I mentioned in DB Malakhead's question earlier, but they're still just ideas. I don't have the plot or concepts thought of at all. Once I have the time to actually do that, I'm sure I'll get started on working on it. The second one is, what do you think of Yumeniki and Off? Haven't played either game, but I know they're one of, if not the most well-known RPG Maker games out there, even compared to Omori, OneShot, and Hylix. They're still the dynamic duo of RPG Maker. They both seem cool and I can see myself spending my time playing them, but unfortunately I have other things to do, like answering these questions and making a video out of it. Next we have Sunny, who asks, What's your current favorite game and why? Standalone game, I don't really have any. A game series, well, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here and say, Toho Project to Thank you, Toby. As for the why, I explained most of it in the YTPMV question Funter more as earlier, but essentially, Toho has been a part of my internet life for a long time. But I never really got into it until recently, and when I did, I was well and truly hooked. And now, I don't think it'll ever leave my sight, and I don't want it to ever leave my sight. That's how special it is to me, despite me being a fan of other things for longer. Just by looking back at the stuff I made in 2023, you can see how much Toho had influenced me. I just really, really love it. But I think you know enough of this by now, judging by these two drawings I made. And how dare you, coffee rules. Sincerely, a caffeine addict. Oh no, yeah, I agree. I got a fuck ton of coffee in my house right now. It's just that, 
When it comes to an artist's persona, coffee is the lamest thing you could give them. The next thing would be baggy eyes, a hoodie, and hell, let's throw in a beanie too. Did, did I just describe Jesse Pinkman? Whatever, let's move on. Next, we have the Clown Man guy, who also has multiple questions. The first one is, what made you a Lisa fan? On December of 2020, I was recommended a video by Yorick Saladbar about Yek. Even though I had watched other videos dunking on this game already, I still wanted to watch this anyway. Then, I was recommended his video on Lisa, a game I had heard of and have seen snippets of at the time, but never really got interested in. So little interest in fact that I didn't even know that it was a turn-based RPG. After watching that video, I wanted to know more. And without any money on Steam at the time, I watched Manly Badass Heroes playthrough instead. When I saw that you could do combos with Brad, that was what hooked me in. It just seemed so cool. Then, after that, I ended up playing the games, then the fan games, then I uploaded on this channel, and the rest is history. The second one is, what got you into Toho? As I've mentioned multiple times, Toho has been with me for a long time, and I only got into it recently. Early on in 2022, I was recommended Bonku Miru on my YouTube homepage. I remember I used to watch this on loop back in 2018, so I wanted to see why I was so obsessed with it. Then I got obsessed with it again. Eventually, this will snowball into me discovering other Chiru Miru parodies and Toho YTBMVs or Auto MADs in general. So essentially, the seeds have been planted at this point. It just needed to sprout. And so it sprouted early in 2023 when I was recommended this video. I mentioned this in my channel summary, but to make a long story short, this was my first time really listening to you and Owen was her. I thought it sounded cool, then I found 8-bit drummer drumming to the song, thought it sounded even cooler, then I got recommended many other videos while also revisiting ones I've already watched, like the aforementioned Bonku Miru. And it snowballed, and snowballed, and here we are. I am now the person that views some of the most horrible people in fiction with cute girls. I'm gonna find any excuse I can get to keep showing these drawings, by the way. But yes, that's my history with Toho. Let's hope Kane doesn't erase it, eh? <laughs> that was shit, let's move on. The third one is, who is Joel's mama? I don't know, I guess we'll have to wait for MU and chapter 2 and 3. While we do that, I'm gonna go get a job, find someone, get married, have kids, fulfill all my dreams, have grandkids, and die peacefully without regrets. Next we have Nope No Joke, who asks, are you real? Sorry, I was in the bathroom. Of course I'm real, you can see me right now. Well, my persona, but you get the point. Next we have Hyde, who asks, Do you still check under the bed out of fear for the big bad AI art coming to get you? For context, I had ranted about AI art in my 2022 channel summary. Let me repeat, my 2022 channel summary, not 2023. This guy kept thinking about that for nearly a whole year. That's not healthy, dude. Let it go. I, of all people, know what it's like to dwell on the past. It's literally the main reason why the majority of 2022 sucked for me. As for my actual answer, I'm not worried about AI art as much as other artists because drawing isn't what I do for their living. Yeah, so I should note that this script was written before the whole Sora AI generated videos thing happened. I don't like that at all. That has zero benefits whatsoever because it's not necessarily just drawings. You can just spread misinformation and clueless people would believe it as real. But uh, yeah, I don't like that. Um, let's get back to my answer now. That doesn't undermine the fact that it's still a concern for the majority of artists out there. The fact that money that could go to supporting people who draws us their job ends up going to a machine that feeds off of said people is not something you should overlook. People shouldn't have to fight and make their voice heard just so they can continue doing what they're good at and what they're passionate about. And regarding checking under the bed, I literally cannot do that. As I mentioned in a previous question about how my life is going in 2023, the worst thing to have happened to me was bed bugs, and because of that, I had to take various measures to mitigate their infestation. One of these measures was to separate my mattress from its base. What's a mattress without a base? It's something that's on the floor. Because of that, if I were to theoretically check under the bed, I would have to literally lift up my mattress to see what's under there. Anyway, that was a question coming from someone who I think is roleplaying as their profile picture judging by the reply they gave me. So let's just move on. And finally, the last question that we have for today is from Aaron Weapon, who asks, I only have one question. Are you gonna make more content of other fandoms? Huh, I thought the final question would be more exciting. Nevertheless, I'm here to answer it. I've already mentioned before about how this channel is exclusively Lisa-related content, and the content of other games that I'm remotely interested in are other RPG Maker games, TF2, Shovel Knight, which I actually have already uploaded on my main channel, but that was like 4 years ago, so I don't mind doing it all over again. And of course, Toho. Ultimately, I don't think I'll make any of these videos, as I don't think it's worth it in the long run, not only for my channel, but for my enjoyment of making videos as well. These are games that I enjoy playing on my own time, not something I show to the world. And that's the Q&A. Most likely the last one I'll ever make. Overall, this one performed significantly better compared to my first one, and I'm happy that it went as well as it did. I'm sure this video won't perform well, 
but I'm satisfied with the fact that I got it done at all. Thank you so much to everyone who left their questions, even the dumb ones. But hey, you know what they say, there are no stupid questions. But seriously, what am I supposed to answer to this? And look at that, no one got left behind. Well, except for this comment that my friend Nezu left of them just saying hello to me. Though, now that I'm including it, no one truly got left behind. Now, if you had forgotten, I had actually made some promises during the questions video. Most notably, the fact that I can draw unique things for individual questions. However, as you may have noticed, the editing in this video ended up being very minimal. This is mostly because this video has been long overdue. I wanted to do it in the beginning of 2023, and I ended up only getting the questions video out in November of that year. And even then, I couldn't manage to get this video out in the same year. So I didn't want to put in the extra time if it meant delaying this video even more. As I mentioned during the intermission earlier, I'm gonna let the gameplay footage continue playing after I'm done talking. So if you're not interested in that, feel free to click off now. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I don't really have a clear idea on what other videos I want to make this year, but I'm sure it'll come in due time. See you all next time, whenever that may be.